space and time um, is the way we measure distance and the way we entertain our understanding about where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. We use the inch. Uh, we use the yard, the foot, the mile. Over yonder across the pond, they use the, the meter, kilometers, centimeters type of thing. It's all the same thing. It, help, it is designed to help us to be able to discover through measurement something about our lives. We measure our lives by days. Is that correct? Uh, we measure our distance uh, by miles. It appears to me on first reading, and I can't say validated of God, that the building of the Tower of, the, of, the Tower of Babel understood that you could build your way out of the presence of the restrictions of time and space as we understand it. That is to say, when we look out into the universe, we take a Hubble telescope and we look deep into the universe, we look way beyond our galaxy and into the other galaxies, billions of galaxies out, we're looking at distance. We just sent a probe to Mars last month, 3 million miles or 30, 300 million miles or whatever it is distance that it traveled to Mars and then landed that little tarantula looking thing on Mars. But in many ways, time and distance, when we look at life, now not just space and, 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 and distance and space, but when we look at the eternity of life, that the time and the distance that we see in the universe is simply there to entertain us. By that I mean, with, without an infinite distance, our minds would reach a point where we would fuse out. So we have to have a distance beyond our ability to conceive. But it's only there to measure the fact that life eternal is just like that. There is no ending to life. And when you seek eternal life and the process through which everybody is going to receive eternal life except the elect is the resurrection. Now you're looking at a mathematical equation using the word resurrection, using the word eternity, using the, 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 the mathematical equation of time and distance. Let's say that, that just outside that window but in another dimension, and I don't want to go all out of space type of thing. That's not what I'm trying to do. But there's another distance, there's another time in which the angels of the Lord encamp around about us. In fact, the angels that are with me now, they are with me, but they're not in my time space. They're in a different, if you will, time to occupy their protection of my life. So when we look at the resurrection and we look at the Tower of Babel or the pyramids, that we are, have to begin to think beyond the limitedness of our minds because we can only conceive of distance. We, 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 can, we can't conceive of eternity. We have no idea what it means. It's just longer than long. But we really don't know what it means. We have no idea and how people operate in, in eternity. We don't have a mathematical equation. We don't have an equation that's come up in calculus or physics or any other ma mathematical dictum to help us to understand who we are. I, you know, when Jesus came to see me, when people, when, when saints or angels who come from another space than ours, they're not subject to the laws of material things. They can come right through that window because they're coming in a different space cap. They come in a different cap. They come in a different way. So they're not subject to the laws of this, if you will, this world in which we live. So when we began to think about ourselves spiritually, we need to think about ourselves differently than the world in which we live. We need to think about ourselves with respect to the kingdom of God, which I started doing some time ago. I told Elder Hartfield years ago when I was just a boy and so was he that the kingdom of God existed in here. I've been to church and I'd heard all the, God, the, the church talk. I'd seen all the, and I, I'd seen all the, the civil rights marching. I'd seen all that kind of stuff. But I, my understanding that the kingdom of God was something that was a part of my total makeup. 
And in there is where I draw my power from. My source of power comes from, not from this world, but from the world that is beyond this world, which is the kingdom of God. And Hartfield understood it. He actually understood it. He's only about 70, 18. He actually understood it. I told him, man, don't ask somebody to give you no job. Go get the job, which one you want? Go get the one you want. He actually understood it. So even more now, we need to understand spiritually, we have to stop looking into our, into our personal existence, such as Black Lives Matter or civil rights marching or the color of one's skin or gender. Stop looking at that and start looking at God's kingdom and begin to understand the power that is from, that's why these people are not gonna beat me. And that's why I've not been defeated. Let me tell you something, when them people hit me and they wanted to kill me and they thought I was gonna be dragged out this pulpit, the reason why I didn't succeed is because I wasn't in the same realm they were. They were in a realm. They even went and got the newspapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're not in the same realm. But we're not in the same distance in space. I told you, I asked the Lord to let me explain this, right? So now if it looks like I'm doing a math professor's class here today. It isn't that at all. This is symbolic. It's where Jesus was baptized. It's where John baptized. And so this is not a rebaptism. It's just a symbolic, if you will, act of what we're going to do, being in the water at, at the place where Jesus was baptized. And what I'd like to do is to baptize today that we would come to terms with the understanding of what God is calling for in righteousness. The, uh, he's not calling for prosperity. He, he isn't calling for culturalism. God is calling for righteousness. If we would commit ourselves to fulfill all righteousness, and God has calls us to be persecuted for righteousness sake, as John was persecuted for righteousness, and so Jesus. I got to tell you that I'll never forget this experience of actually um, stepping in the water where Jesus and were baptized, where John has baptized so many people. This is such a historic and a powerful, powerful sight. Just to touch the water uh, was so critical. And I'm glad that people got baptized to have that experience. Uh, it was a safe experience and a great experience. Uh, I'm not even going to change my clothes. I want to just stay in baptism mode until I get back to the hotel. So that's what I want to say. All right. This has been live from the Jordan River. <laughs> God bless you all. Peace. <laughs> Righteousness. Boom, chuckalaka goes right there. My mother started liking the school and let me come here every single year. It has been five years and now I'm in the seventh grade. I still love the school. It has taught me a lot of things about the world and all around it. And let me see things I've never seen before like me participating in the history fair last year. I would like to give thanks to all my classmates for making me feel comfortable and at home here. Please, to all the new and old parents in the school, don't take your kids out of the school because it will probably... <laughs> it will probably be the biggest mistake you've ever made. No matter what type of child you have, this school will shape it into a world's leader. So do yourselves a favor. Oh my goodness. Okay. So do yourselves a favor and keep your kids here till they graduate, and it will change yours and your child's life. Peace and blessings. Over the years, we have served more than one million meals to hungry bellies and hungry people here in the Harlem community. And I wanted you to be able to see that. I want you to see our involvement with youth, our summer youth programs, the, uh, our courtyard being used as a, uh, a place where children can be safe, guarded and protected as they have their miniature swimming pools, um, and a safe place for children to eat that is guarded, that is protecting, protected by our own sense of security and the wholesome and fresh meals that, um, that we serve. We, we wanted you to be able to see the mission of this church. And we've been doing this for years. Just recently, one of our members 
more than a 30-year member of this church, but it hasn't, not one that, you know, that you would probably find as members of some other churches with their nose stuck up in the air. But her father is now close to death or very sick in the state of South Carolina. And uh, what I said to her, well, I said, well, because she doesn't have money, I said, we will buy you a bus ticket, a round trip bus or train ticket for you to travel to South Carolina to, to be with your father in this time of pandemic. There's very little funding around. There's, there's sickness everywhere. And and she, the thing that just blew me away was she said as she was talking to Elizabeth, she said, but how are you going to do that, to, to pay for me a round trip ticket to, to travel and give me expense money? And because yeah, you got to, Pastor Manning has to feed the children. He has to take, he has to educate the children. He has to buy school supplies for them. He has to pick them up in the mornings and take them back. And then he's got the ministry he has to take care of, all the bills of running the church, of keeping a major house like our house operational, keep the lights on, keep the, how are you going to be able to do that? And she was almost reluctant to take the money because she felt that it would be better served by feeding the children. We gave it to her anyway. But we want you to know that we do a work in this community. There have been a lot of lies told on us. And it's almost unimaginable why some of the people that have lied on us. But I can tell you behind all of it is the LGBTQ community. They don't want us to be successful, but we are, and we're going to continue to be successful in serving the meals that we're serving and serving the people that we are. And the LGBTQ community will not take us down. They are not going to take our church, yet they have defamed us. They've written ugly newspaper articles about us. They've marched against us. They've done a whole lot of ugly things. But you see what we have done and that's not even the half of our service to children and to the needy in terms of our homeless shelters and the things that we've done over the years. And we will continue. And probably the lies and the smears and the ugly newspaper articles and the wicked spirits and the so-called I ain't for the black man, that is not going to go away. I don't expect it to go away. I don't. But I do tell you this, that we will succeed against all of that, for God is with us, and I am his servant.